Now, can you remember what your starting wage was when you got your first job? Well, uh, some of the country's graduates are being offered starting salaries of up to £45,000. And a report for the graduate market in 2017 found employers such as the retailer Aldi and the law firm Baker McKenzie are among those offering at least £40,000 for a job. So our question today is whether millennials have it too easy. And I should say, in case you don't actually know what a millennial is, according to the Oxford Dictionary, it is a person who reached young adulthood in the early 20s. 21st century, so that goes right up to sort of 34 year olds. Uh, now, joining me to discuss this is Paymana Assad, a political activist and blogger, and Sam Bowman, executive director at the Adam Smith Institute. If it's not too impolite to kick things off by asking if either of you uh, are in that category, as I am, of being millennials, just a yes no answer from you, first of all, Paymana. Uh, yes, I am. And to you? Uh, yes, but it doesn't feel like that, the older I get. <laughs> OK. Uh, well, I'll start with the first question then. We're hearing that millennials are often being uh, offered a starting salary of £40,000. I don't know if that was uh, your experience, Paymana. No, it definitely wasn't. I think it was very, very difficult to get into the job market in the first place um, in terms of a lot of companies wanting 10 or 5 years of experience even before you know, you've actually started work. Um, so I don't think it's I don't think it's fair to say that you know millennials get it easy, um, but I do think it's unfair that graduates now are being offered that high of a salary from these companies, because in my opinion you need to start from the bottom in terms of getting a better work ethic. Okay, interesting. Sam Bowman, would you agree with that? Is forty thousand pounds too generous, even if somebody is a graduate or a postgraduate for their first job, given that they have no experience in that sector? Well, it's a bit of a strange question, honestly, um, because it's not really up to us. It's not my business um, what these people what these people are paid. You know, it's funny. I, I spend a lot of my time talking about the pay of chief executives and bankers and things like that, but I never imagined in my life that I'd be defending the salaries of an Aldi manager that, we're, that we've come to this point. Um, I, I tend to think that millennials have it better than we might imagine because there are lots of job opportunities out there there are lots of really exciting new industries in tech and so on that are opening up to us and, and that's great where things aren't so good for us is in terms of things like house prices uh, the cost of living is very high and that can make it very very difficult for some people so it's stuff like that that we should be focusing on rather than the salaries of graduates who work for Aldi. Fine okay well let's pick up on that then Paymana do we have it better than the generation before us those so-called baby boomers I mean I mean, apparently we're better educated than that generation, but we're a fifth worse off. Well, I think it depends on what your ethnicity is, because if you're a woman, you find it harder to find a job. If, you, if you're an ethnic minority, say if you're a black man or if you're a Muslim man, you might find it even more difficult. So my question really is, is though, are those companies, you know, making sure that the backgrounds of the people they employ um, are diverse because a lot of the time in recruitment we have an issue with having all white male uh, panels uh, interviewing people for jobs and I do agree that we do have an issue in the you know housing and the cost of living and maybe we do have it better than our parents generation but I still think it's difficult and considering the Brexit vote I don't think it's going to get any more easier. And what's your view on that Sam? Well, when it comes to women, they actually get paid more per hour um, in their 20s and 30s than men do, and that's great. Where the gender pay gap kicks in is after um, the kind of mid-30s. That's when some women start to leave the workforce or they find it difficult because childcare costs are so high. But in, for millennials, um, per hour, women are paid more than men, so I don't know if that's actually a big issue. When it comes to people from um, minorities, most big firms make a huge effort to try and reach out to people like that, and it's, that's a very, very good thing, and we should be be encouraging that as much as possible but I don't think I mean maybe there is evidence I haven't seen but I don't think the evidence shows that there's a problem on the company side again where there is a problem there it's to do with the education system basically failing people from inner cities and from poorer parts of the country and that's again a, pr a problem with the state education system it's not something these companies need to be blamed for you know it's certainly true there are problems every generation does have problems and I think baby boomers voting for people like Donald Trump certainly doesn't help people like us but 
What is great is the fact that we will live for longer than any generation in history. We will be richer in real terms by the time we have kids than any generation in history. You know, these are really, really great facts, and I'm pleased that well, um, the world just seems to be getting better and better. Well, Sam, we're living for longer, but our parents' generation would have a lot of equity, if not all of their retirement funds, tied up in property, something that is unattainable increasingly for millennials. And do you think that's going to come back to bite them once they uh, face retirement and, and not having that kind of pension pot to fall back on? I certainly hope so, if I'm honest. I feel so uh, resentful towards baby boomers for basically blocking the new development, the new construction of buildings anywhere in the country, particularly places like London, where people really, really want to live. And that's a huge problem. And what I would love would be for more millennials, more people in their 20s and their early 30s who can't get onto the property ladder to kind of join together and say, you know what, we're the ones losing out because planning laws make it so difficult to build. That doesn't just drive up house prices. It also makes it harder for people to move around the country to to the places where the best jobs are. So this is a real generational problem. But I don't think that it's something that we have to um, be too fatalistic about, because it's true that baby boomers, you know, their, their, their house prices would fall if we had planning reform. That's the point. But if they have more than one child, then they have an interest in planning reform as well. They have an interest in their kids being better off. So a lot of it is about messaging and communication from people like us to that older generation to say, if you want your kids and your grandkids to be better off, you're going to need people to, to build. You need to let and more houses be built. OK, well, a final thought to you, Pemana. A lot of blame being uh, laid squarely on the shoulders of our parents' generation, but they may well be the banker mum and dad that so many of us have to depend on. Well, I don't have that mum and dad bank account uh, to depend on, so uh, I don't think that's very fair to say that a lot of us do that. I think young people in general have it hard, and speaking to people on the ground, not looking at the statistics as such, you don't feel that things are getting better. You feel that it's going to be difficult. And the job market is really, really tough to get into. But yes, I do agree that young people in general have more information at hand. Um, they, they know a lot about the issues. And I do agree on the, on the housing point. OK, really good to talk to you both. Pimana Assad, Sam Thank Bowman, you. thanks for your time this lunchtime. And if you're watching you. at home, do let us know your views on that. I'm sure uh, plenty of them will be coming in.